Captain Adami, on last year's exact same subject panel, but said, if you build a golden ship and a it with a demotivated and uninterested crew, you run the risk of running that ship to the ground. He then went on to say that if you get an old ship and you equip it with a motivated and interested crew, which has a sense of direction and a link between the crew, the crew department and the technical department, you increase, you increase your chances for success. And yet there was another member of this exact same panel who were very fortunate enough to have him with us here today, Jan Merrick, with his first and last comment on the panel, in my opinion, he gave the solution and the remedy to today's chosen topic, which is crewing, staff training, and retention strategies. Jan's first comment was, we have to look in ourselves first. We have to look into ourselves first when it comes to our crew's training in prosperous and not so prosperous time. We have to look to, our first, to ourselves first when we're recruiting people right out of university to convince them and their families. We have to look to ourselves first when we offer benefits and bonuses that stem from five to 25 years so they have a horizon for themselves and their families to see the benefit of staying in this industry. And last but not least, we have to look to ourselves first to offer similar Christmas parties like we offer our ground staff to the people at sea. And then when he was asked, if you were given a magic wand, what would you have done? And Jan said, I would have welcomed them with open arms. In other words, he wants to bring the seafarer and their families to the center of our attention. Because Nicolas and our chairman gave me five minutes to speak, I'm going to be giving you uh, a winning formula, the exact same formula that I delivered over a one-day training session at the American p &I Club uh, when they flown me recently to New York. It, it's called the five piece of success. With the five piece of success, you will open your arms, you will get your crew to be in the center of your attention, and you will look to yourselves first. It's not about building a golden ship, it's about building a golden team. P number one, be positive. I need to congratulate each and every person in this conference hall for taking a positive first step to being here. Being here to talk about your shortcomings, being here to talk about possible actions taken and possible reactions that need to be created. As my late dad, Rolando Virardi, used to say, every day when you wake up, son, you have a choice to be positive or to be very positive. The choice is yours. And you, my dear friends, you have a choice. You have a choice to deal with all these issues positively or very positively. Because to my knowledge, there was never a monument erected to the most negative person, to a committee, or to a panel. P number two is be present. When I invited Tomas Kazakos from the Cyprus Shipping Chamber to come to one of my live streaming shows, he talked about the tender age of 27 when he first went to his first event, and there were two art murals in uniform. One was very talkative, and the other was very frugal with his words. And then Tomas, after an hour or so, turned to the admiral who was very frugal with his words, and he said, Admiral, you're not speaking a lot. How come? And the admiral turned, looked at Tomas, and said, I'm on a double L mission. And Tomas, as curious as we all are, asked, what's a double L mission? It's listen and learn. It is exactly what we need to do with the crew, listen and learn. Because every captain in this room is a manager, and every manager in this room is a captain of our crew's souls and our crew's fate. Listening and learning is perhaps the most important thing, since you're not only dealing with a multi-cultured uh, team, but you're dealing with a team that not only needs to cooperate together, but it needs to cohabitate together. Listening is more important than even implementing some of the suggestions. Third P is being prompt. I follow a formula that has proven quite successful in my international career. The formula is seven times seven times seven. I respond back to my emails or any other inquiries in seven seconds if I'm not doing anything. Seven minutes, if I'm doing something and I need to finish it, 
or in seven hours, that's the duration of a whole seminar. I've been working with some major players in this industry. The number one reason why your customers are upset with you, I'm not talking about everyone, but the ones I work, is because your people are not so prompt in responding back. Or they might respond back, but in Cyprus is a bank holiday, or somewhere else in the world. They don't want to hear that. Or they, they, you might see palm trees coming out of emails saying, we're on a two weeks holiday, contact my colleague. And you have to know if the colleague will pick up. I'm not saying stick to the seven times seven times seven. You can stretch it to nine times nine times nine or 12 times 12 times 12. But at least get the 24 hour rule out of the window because at the end of the day, it's to your benefit and it's your competitive advantage. P number four, be passionate. Passion stems from the Greek word in Theo, which means enthusiastic, the God within. Release the God within to your crew. Because at the end of the day, the best way to be passionate with your crew is to be compassionate with your crew by being positive, by being present, by being prompt. And last but not least, the fifth P, which many gentlemen have mentioned here, is be people-centered. It was Howard Schultz from Starbucks, the CEO, who said, we are not in the coffee business serving people. We are in the people business serving coffee. And the same holds true for you, my dear friends. You are not in the shipping industry serving people, but you're in the people business providing your shipping services. So in concluding, I would like to say that it is not about building a golden ship, but it is about treating your team in a golden way by applying the 5P formula. Because at the end of the day, my dear friends, the smartest, and the wisest thing to do is to take care of the people who take care of your valuable assets as they sail across the globe. Thank you very much. I'm still the same person. Uh, let me introduce our panel, starting from uh, the lady. Angie Hartman is the Senior Vice President and Crew Manager for Starbuck SA, President of Vista Gelas also. Welcome, Angie. We also have our friend Jan Merink, Jan Merink, Managing Director of Marlowe. Then we go to, uh, welcome. Then we go to Lazarus, where is my friend Lazarus? Lazarus Hanalambus from FRS, FRS Ship Management. And last but not least, we have Captain Elias Ladaz. Welcome as well, HR Training Manager, Van House Corporation. First question, let's start with Angie. And Angie, can you tell us how important is crew retention for a company, and how do you make sure you increase that retention? First of all, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Olaan Nicolas for the invitation. It's an honor. Thank you for being here. I would like to start by saying that I truly believe that uh, our people, both at sea and ashore, sorry, I'm not just it, um, are the uh, backbone of the company, uh, which we must uh, advance and preserve. From my experience and point of view, being in the crew department for the last 25 years, I can say that the crew retention as a, a research consistently plans is one of the most important factors of running a successful shipping company. The main challenges related to the crewings are recruitment, mo motivation, loyalty to the company, com commitment to their jobs, training of the crew. The competitive advantage of each company is to recruit and retain positive and motivated seafarers, which will be able to perform successfully and productive productivity their duties on board. Let us understand why re retaining a valuable crew is essential for an organization and what policies and strategies we can use on our generally to increase the retention. As it is uh, widely believed, a ship is good as the crew on board. This uh, simple sentence summarizes why it is of such great importance to focus on recruitment and retention of our crew. It is important to create a pool of seafarers that will maintain and increase their performance and productivity, productivity to the highest level. Having a high retention means that A, 
crew remains main, mainly years within the same company, learning and growing up with company standards. Two, resources spent on training the crew start to bear fruit as, as the crew uses the training acquired in accordance with the company's recruit requirements. Three, relation, very important, between the head office and the seafarer, strengthen creating mutual respect and promoting loyalty. Loyalty is, uh, takes time. Loyalty is not something that you've been built overnight. You have to invest. You have to have direct communication with your crew. You have to have open door policy. Crew that are satisfied within the organization, they, they work for are far more likely to recommend their colleagues and relatives to join the organization, thus expanding the pool. When an emergency arises, a crew, a crew that works many years within your company will most probably <clears throat> sorry, accept to help the company in the way needed, thus providing the most safe solution in the problem. High retention rates also promote the commercial image of the organization. As an organization that respects, appreciates, and rewards the most loyal and senior crew. It helps office personnel to create a better relation with the crew on board and identify their strengths and their weaknesses. On the other hand, low levels of retention increase functional and operational expenses, creating a negative effect on crew and company's morale. Companies invest on retention and motivates can be either financial or moral. We've noticed that uh, many times it's not financial, it's more moral. Every CFR is looking for a long-term, well-paid uh, um, well collaboration with an employer in order to attain personal development and have a uh, balance between work and personal life. Benefits offered to CFRs in order to increase retentions are, or could be, competitive re remuneration, rejoining seniority bonuses, Staying close and supporting our seafarers with their families, health insurance, promotions. Promotions is something which is very important. You see a lot of seafarers that come to your company because you uh, give them a chance to be promoted. They stay with companies that have been a long time there and because they're not promoted, although they are paid better, they prefer to go to another company. Welfare facilities on board, example, internet, recreational facilities, etc. I don't want to waste your time with uh, details. Crew forms, very important. You come very close to your crew, you exchange ideas, you discuss about uh, deficiencies, you can point, pinpoint out problems that you have had overall as a, a company. Christmas parties, the bonding with the families, very important. I've noticed in my experience that uh, having contact with the families create a very big bond, it helps loyalty, and you are there when you are needed. It's give and take. It is also very important to establish open door. This is very important. Open door policy. Everybody must have the access and the opportunity to be able to talk to you. You must not have a bottleneck. You have to hear everybody. You have to be fair. You have to keep your word. You have to be objective. You have to listen to everybody. This is how you gain loyalty. This is one of the most important ways for people to come back to you. And thank, thank you, Angie. Thank you very much for your elaborative <laughs> answer. Let's go to Jan Mering. Jan, what is one of the most important aspects at Marlowe, or Marlowe Columbia, for that matter, for optimizing staff development? Thank you, Michael. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a bit difficult to tell you now about optimizing staff because you did refer to a lot of points which I raised one year ago, and it's uh, in the internet available, the whole speech uh, last year. After Angie touching most of the subjects on the crewing as well, uh, I believe a lot is said already. You can focus on engagement. Already. But, but I, will, I will come to the point, and uh, there were two things which uh, I would like to refer to. It's golden ship, which you mentioned several times, and uh, importance. And, uh, I believe um, if I see importance and uh, how important a uh, human being is, I would like uh, to mention that during today's panel, uh, every panel considered itself as very important. And uh, the first panel about uh, new markets uh, took about 45 minutes. 
the next panel about new regulations took 50 minutes and we unfortunately get only 30 minutes. So I believe that we should have actually more time, especially having as well an excellent speaker like you. But coming back, uh, it is a question of uh, making everybody aware of human being and uh, to make everybody aware that uh, the human being and the element is very critical. Now just imagine we have in this room 10 ship owners or 10 ship managers and we would have 10 ships and they are absolutely identical, absolutely identical. What would make the difference? It's the crew and the, shore, the, the staff ashore and that is simply important. We have to make sure that we invest in our staff, whether on board or whether ashore. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's go to Lazarus Karalambus. Lazarus, uh, you are in the ferry business, if I'm not mistaken. I've done my research, I saw it was 0.3% of the shipping industry. How can a multinational and diverse organization such as FRS is able to cater for the individual needs of your crew? Uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone from me as well. Uh, picking up from what uh, my colleague Jan had uh, said here a minute ago, our biggest uh, element, our biggest asset is the human element. And uh, we unfortunately, most of the events that uh, take place around the world, we always speak about the fastest vessels, the newest technologies, the most advanced ones, uh, but we always tend to give the least time to the human element. And they are the soul of our vessels. Without the human element, we cannot go anywhere. And uh, it is in our philosophy, it is in our group's philosophy, that it is very important that we have to have some processes in place in order to take, to take care of our crew. We have to see them firstly as individuals, secondly as human beings, and not as another number in the database that exists in our, uh, in our systems. Um, as a very business, as, as uh, Michalis mentioned a second ago, we operate in a very diverse environment, uh, culturally and geographically. And uh, in order for us to be able to keep our crew happy, uh, we have to implement uh, certain policies. And we have crew, just to mention, we have crew from 41 nationalities, and uh, they have been with us for a few months to, four, uh, to 25 years, some of them. How do we do that? We have to cater for the cultural differences. You know, when you have crew from North America and when you have crew from the Gulf of uh, Arabian Gulf, you have to take care of their cultural differences. You have to understand that not everybody thinks, <coughs> works, and behaves the same way. So we have to cater for their cultural differences. And very important, we have to offer to everybody a listening ear. Uh, perhaps I'm repeating myself because some of my colleagues have actually said the same things, but we believe in crewing that these are very important elements but we have to keep uh, reinforcing to everybody throw. We have to create a home from home environment. You know, seafarers want to feel happy at their place of environment. You know, just like office staff, so they like to be comfortable and happy and relaxed and wanting to go to work. We have to do the same thing for the seafarers while from boat. We also have to understand what appears to be very trivial to us. It might be very, very important to a seafarer that comes from, uh, uh, that is working 2,000 miles away from home. And um, we have to keep our promises. If we promise them even the smallest thing, we have to deliver on our promises. We have to get to know them. It is very important that we place emphasis on the individual. And that we do so by investing in the personal relations and not just in their career development. And these uh, are the main points of what I would have liked to mention. Thank you very much. Uh, last question goes to Captain Elias Ladas. I know you're not in the millennial generation, but I was very fortunate to be speaking to you last evening, and so I'm gonna be asking you uh, a millennial question. Can automated training, for example, DVDs, replace the human trainer? Well, first, first of all, uh, I would like to remind us that uh, crewing is the 50% plus or minus of the daily operating cost of the vessel. Uh, on the other hand, uh, DVDs uh, in our, uh, in our uh, contemporary times are cheaper, more flexible, and more fast to, to, to effect a training. But is it uh, effective, really? 
It is a passive way of learning things, even in an interactive mode. Clarifications cannot be provided. Specific needs of the trainee cannot be addressed. Difficulties in English language cannot be compensated. Human interaction is a force multiplier in passing knowledge. However, at high cost, uh, the communicators like yourself uh, say that 90% uh, of the communication is, uh, is uh, passed through the eye contact. Correct. Right. Thus, DVD training should be restricted in a refreshing or just checking an already existing knowledge. New things should, should, should be passed on <coughs> via human trainers. This will also make up for the additional cost because the training will be effective. I would like to remind at this point a recent MIB report, Marine Accident Investigation Board of the UK, that they found, uh, they found pitfalls in the ECDIS training which resulted, has resulted in, uh, in accidents. Which ECDIS training has, has been done mostly through DVDs, as we know. Uh, yeah, the terms of additionally required uh, certificates is like we need more, more housing, is like we have built a huge uh, uh, building which is called the basic training, the training provided by the maritime academies and we only uh, repaint it and refresh it and when something new comes uh, on in the industry we build uh, some, some shacks around it instead of creating an integrated training system an integrated new town of, uh, of the knowledge that is uh, mandatory for our crews to run uh, the modern vessels. Thank you very much. Uh, we are the only thing standing between yourselves and lunch, so I would ask the panelists if they would like to say some concluding words, so we will be the panel that you will always remember that we finished earlier. <laughs> just, just a characterization of uh, what we have to avoid with, uh, with our crews. We don't have to use them as spare parts. Full stop. Excellent. Let me start with Angie, uh, just 30 seconds. Speak from your heart, please. Okay, my heart. If uh, a part of the chain breaks, then the whole system will collapse. Excellent. I love how succinct you are. Jan? Well, people are our resources and assets, and these need adequate investment, as we mentioned before. One of the key aspects is engagement. We have to engage them in our daily life. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you very much. Lazarus. And uh, my closing remark is as follows. Uh, we have to cherish the crew. They are the driving force behind our vessels and behind our businesses. And since uh, today is Valentine's Day, let's show some love to them as well. Excellent. Well done. And last but not least, Captain Elias Ladas. Yeah, we have to provide them job security through a long-term plan. This is their main anxiety, as I, as I have observed. Uh, they feel proud and, uh, and, uh, uh, and important when uh, key personnel from the office visit them at their uh, places. And uh, caring for their training, not the, not the casual, the official one, but uh, as we do, we do, we provide the seminars that we design them specifically for the specific needs of our uh, uh, seafarers taking feedback from the masters, uh, what are their weaknesses? So they find it uh, very important, apart from the DVDs and the thousands of certificates they have to obtain. Excellent. Uh, just in closing, I would like to say that... Uh, yes, please, Angie. I would say also that the open door communication is number one, uh, because they feel very important, and then they feel uh, very close to the owner. Um, I don't know if it's good or bad, but if I think from my position in our company, uh, it's very important for the crew to be loyal to the owner. And uh, if you have a chance to talk with them, the crew managers, it's, uh, that's, this is how you will build the loyalty with them. They feel that you count on them, you're listening to them, and you're already there to assist them. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah? Well, that we uh, finish in time does not mean that uh, we have nothing to say anymore. We have a lot to say. And uh, especially crew is very, very close to our hearts. 
but we can see as well a number of uh, hungry faces here, so I believe we will ask to keep short. And Michael, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Uh, Michael, just, Michael, thank you. Yes. I have a question to the panel. Yes. For all of you, um, how many days that it just... Thanks. You were all talking about engagement and being close to your crew and, uh, and, and love them even. How many days do you or your executive staff spend on board of the ships and engage with crew? Lazarus. Uh, for those that know me quite well, they know that I spend a lot of my time on planes, visiting vessels and, visit, and visiting crews. So I think that uh, perhaps 50% of my time is spent with uh, crew-related activities. I would also like to add to that. I do the same thing. We used to go on board the vessels. Okay, we don't do that very often now, but we do our forums. We visit our manning agency very often, like every two months, and we have direct contact with our crew. Captain Elias? As a DPA, I spend one voyage length for uh, five, six vessels every year. And as a trainer, we visit our mining places twice or uh, four times a year to deliver these seminars I described before uh, to our crews for one week. And last but not least, Jan? Well, uh, I have to be honest, I don't spend too much time with the seafarer himself, and Dita knows it very well, so I can't say anything else. <laughs> But still, every uh, ship's visit uh, from our uh, crew superintendents, when they visit the ship, goes via my desk, will be read, and I see the needs of the seafarer, which will then be addressed. Thank you. Thank you. So, in closing, I would say use your vision to look at technology and data, but use the double L mission when interacting with your people. Thank you very much. <laughs>